You know, I think you could say that in my course, I call it the Putin generation, but you could also call it the internet generation because that's really what's going on. I mean, these are, this is a small slice of the Russian population. There aren't that many young kids in Russia, but the ones that we're looking at, and there is some research being done in Russia, actually very interesting sociological, kind of more academic research and some polling, shows that these young people are just like young people around the world. They're on the web and they are looking at the internet and they are exposed to the big world out there. So that means that they're, they're kind of more inquisitive. Uh, they tend to be kind of more entrepreneurial. Um, a number of them speak foreign languages because Russia is now a pretty open society. They can travel. Uh, who knows how COVID affects that, but in general, they're traveling, they're going to Europe, they're uh, studying abroad sometimes, and even in the United States. So the more you have of that, they tend to be, I'm going to use the word liberal, but it has no political significance. They're just more open to the world and more accepting. Uh, that said, there are more of this type of person in big cities kind of as a, as a whole, Moscow, St. Petersburg, et cetera. But this is spreading as access to the internet grows. And I think the other part that's very, very interesting about this is that they are exposed to culture all over the world. So the information that they're getting is not just the news, but they are getting music from other countries. They are getting um, let's say TikToks, you know, funny TikToks, making fun of certain things. That's and that sense of humor, as in the United States and the rest of the world, is really important for getting kind of this zeitgeist out there. The other thing I'd say is because of the internet, they are less exposed to state media in Russia, so they are less exposed to propaganda of any type from the government and more open to ideas from outside. They are very different in terms of how they look at the West, especially when you compare it to the older generation. Anybody over 60 is usually, and I'm generalizing, but the polls show they tend to be much more negative about the West. They have a feeling that, you know, the West is trying to influence what's happening in Russia, maybe even bring down the Putin uh, administration. But young people do not have that idea, certainly as much as older people. And I think a lot of it is based on the fact that they've actually, some of them, have been to the West. And the West could also be the former Soviet Union. I mean, we could talk about uh, the Baltics, which are thoroughly European, could be Georgia, could be Ukraine and other places. So just out of Russia with that experience, they do tend to be um, more open to the West. That said, we're not really talking about Jeffersonian democracy. This is not kind of a theoretical subscribing to ideas of democracy, et cetera. It, it tends to be a little bit more um, transactional. In other words, a lot of the young people who've responded to these polls tend to say things work better in the West. You know, banks work, uh, uh, courts work. Uh, trains work, whatever. Trains, of course, work well in Russia. But in other words, the West kind of functions the way they want Russia to function. So they are not saying we, in, as a whole, we want democracy in kind of a general way. It's the fruits of democracy. It's the fruits of participating in their society that they really want. What's going to happen in the future is very hard to predict because, you know, if you looked at it with Western eyes, you'd say uh, these kids are more open, they're more open to ideas, uh, maybe Russia will expand, etc. That's possible. But again, there aren't that many of them. 
And the polls also show that as they get a little bit older into, in their 30s, of course, they get married, they have kids, they have mortgages, just like people in the West, and they become a little bit more, let's say, conservative. They might not be on the streets, uh, you know, protesting. That's the, but they also, in their 30s, become more politically active. This young generation, just as a young generation in the United States, up until now at least, hasn't really voted as much as older people who I think probably feel they have more stake uh, in society. But I do think what is happening, and again, this is backed up by the data, they are volunteering more on a local grassroots basis. They are participating in, uh, you know, collecting signatures, and it might be very much tied to a local issue in the in the city that they live in or the countryside where they live. So it's grassroots democracy, I think. How this will affect Russia as a whole is very, very hard to say because, of course, the overriding percentage of people are more conservative and more supportive of Putin and also just um, less willing to change. And that could be a factor. It is much easier for people just to say, well, let's just keep it stable. Let's not rock the boat. And these young people do kind of want to rock the boat but they also want Russia to succeed. And so how they define that, how they look at what's good for Russia, because they are pretty patriotic as a group, how they define what's good for Russia will really define the future.